talking about the American Revolution and some of the artifacts that the West Point Museum has uh, from that time period and from that war. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Sean Scully and I'm a historian of both colonial America and the American Revolution. And I'm joined today uh, by Mr. Michael Diaz, who is one of the curators here at the West Point Museum and is in fact responsible for all of the um, inventory that the museum has related to clothing, accoutrement, equipment, and uh, camp gear for soldiers. Is that right, Mike? Uh, that, that's right. And I have a particular interest in the American Revolution, so I'm very happy to be here today. All right. So, Mike, what do we have here in front of us today? So this is a, a pair of epaulets uh, that belong to Colonel Noah Phelps of, of Connecticut. Uh, he had a very career in, in the Revolution. I helped plan the attack on Fort Ticonderoga, infiltrated the fort to gather intelligence uh, before the attack, later became a commissary officer, and then a brigadier of, of militia after the war. That's excellent. And, and I noticed that there are two different links. So why would, the, why would these epaulets not be, this, be standardized and be the same length? So remember that there's not a centralized factory that these are coming out of, that uh, these are being ordered by uh, 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 by individual officers from private manufacturers, and this could speak to a lack of experience in making these, it could speak to a lack of available material, mm -hmm. uh, that this is just as big as they could make them for uh, what they had. We're not sure exactly why they're mismatched. A note on the construction of these, so again it's silver bullion thread, uh, woven into this kind of lame here, and then into, those, into these fringes coming off the back. Then this is sewn onto and over a wool strap, uh, and this would go, uh, this would be the lower level, so this would handle, I think, most of the, st uh, the stress that would, uh, that would go on to this. These both have a buttonhole, so there'd be a button on the uniform shoulder that's there for the purpose of, of buttoning these on. Okay. And we're fortunate that Colonel Scott is wearing his uh, Class A uniforms today because you can see the tradition of war rank on the shoulder still survives. So this is how it's, it's uh, marked today, during the American Revolution. Would have, uh, the epaulets would have been worn uh, on the long side of the shoulder, and there'd be a button at the uh, near the officer's collar where these would where these these would button on. Um, this looks very official, right? This looks very professional. Uh, but uh, you know, Noah Phelps started out as a captain in the militia for his town in Connecticut, uh, Sinsbury, right? right? Uh, in Connecticut, and I'm sure that as a captain, when he kind of made a name for himself, he wasn't wearing anything as fancy as this. Right? He was probably wearing uh, whatever wood, whatever clothing he had that would make sense for him to go out in the woods. In fact, um, he, he becomes uh, a captain of the militia and then joins a committee of war that decides on its own, sort of, that they're going to finance a campaign to go to Ticonderoga up on the frontier with Canada and take it from the British before the British know what's happening back in 1775. Right, it really speaks to that, those early kind of ad hoc days of the revolution where there was very little central control. Right, and in fact, he disguised himself, if I remember correctly, as a peddler so that he could get on to the fort because he claimed he needed to shave. Now, I'm not sure why this was a viable excuse for a British commander to allow a peddler or, you know, somebody who was poor onto the post. It's because they needed to shave, but apparently it worked. And he even walked around with the commander and noticed that the walls were dilapidated, and then the commander let slip that the, the British uh, black powder was wet, and that before they could even use it, they would have to dry it and sift it. It gave him all of this great intelligence so that he could sneak back out. But of course, during that time, he's not wearing anything that uh, we would consider uniform in any way, right? right. So, so what, what are these epaulets showing us about the difference between the early part of the war and the later part of the war, say 78, 79, when Colonel Phelps is now part of the Continental Army. So I think from these, these early into the scattered, uh, scattered days, a, the Continental Army forms and uh, tries to embody some of the, the, um, both the customs and the markers of the early military professionalism that you're seeing in, in the European armies. Like, I want to thank you very much for taking your time today to show us these uh, epaulets from Colonel Noah Phillips and the American Revolution. Uh, it's so vital to 
an understanding of our past to be able to make a connection through the material culture that's available here at the West Point Museum. I want to say thank you to the uh, History Department's material culture team for giving us the opportunity to go ahead and film this today for everybody. I want to thank you, Mike, and Lance, and everybody here at the West Point Museum for what you did today so that we could take a look at, uh, at Colonel Phelps's epaulets. And I want to say thank you to all of you out there for watching this today. Hopefully you get a chance soon to be able to look at this and all of the other material culture that's available to us through the West Point Museum. And have a great day.